Hi, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video, I'm going to be configuring MPLS VPN. Um, so what we're going to do is first I'm going to explain the topology, and then we're going to go into uh, the routers and start uh, configuring them up. Um, as you can see here, we have a headquarters router and a branch router to simulate our customer's connection. Um, in the ISP network above, we have ISP Router 1, ISP Router 2, ISP Router 3, and ISP Router 4. Within the ISP network, what we're going to be running on all the in, on the interior interfaces, we're going to be running a uh, EIGRP and uh, MPLS. Now, <coughs> excuse me, um, our our links to our our, co our customer here, what we're going to do is we're going to be running RIP version 2. Uh, and as you can see here, it uh, looks like the premise edge, that would be ISP router 4 and ISP router 1 are premise edge routers. And customer edge routers are the headquarters and the branch router. And you can see here ISP router 3 and ISP router 2, those are called P routers. They're uh, within the MPLS network. Um, all their main purpose is to just switch the tags as they come through. They don't do any um, uh, IP lookups on any of the external IP prefixes from headquarters and the branch. All they're going to see is the, uh, the labels and they're just going to switch based on labels and not based on any IP information or any of the IP uh, for information. Um, Okay, so what we're running here is we're going to be actually participating in the routing uh, with the customer. And this type of VPN is, is called a peer-to-peer -peer VPN. Uh, traditionally, you had two types of peer-to-peer -peer VPNs. You had uh, shared router VPNs, um, or shared router peer-to-peer -peer VPNs, and you, you have um, separate router VPNs. A uh, shared router is where all your customers share the same router uh, in a you know in a geographic area. They share the same router, and uh, you know the ISP participates in the routing with the customer. However, as you can um, imagine, in that type of environment, uh, trying to keep each customer separate is going to be very difficult and. Uh, you're going to have to filter a lot of routes and uh, have uh, very massive uh, ACLs. And so that type of um, a shared router peer-to-peer -peer VPN d is not a uh, very uh, good design. Uh, you also had separate router VPNs where each customer um, had their own router. And as you can uh, tell there, I mean, unless you have a lot of money you're willing to throw out, um, that kind of design uh, where every customer you know has uh, a, uh, an ISP router per se uh, that can get very expensive to have the ISP manage all that for you uh, so what they've come out with um, um, is what's called MPLS VPNs is, is where you can have multiple customers uh, like in a shared peer-to-peer uh, -peer VPN environment, you get multiple customers connect to the same router, um, and they can be um, implementing RFC 1918 um, IP address scheme where they use private IP address ranges, uh, but the router, the um, ISP router, uh, keeps all this information separate in, in separate routing tables. And um, they do that by implementing what's called a VRFs, our virtual routing and forwarding tables within the router. And we'll get in here and we'll configure your VRFs uh, to do that uh, and keep that traffic separated. Um, but that's one of the main things that they use is uh, different VRFs for different customers. Um, they also run a different type of uh, MP, uh, I'm sorry, uh, BGP, it's called multi-protocol BGP. Uh, it's used for uh, different implementations, more advanced implementations of BGP, like uh, multicast BGP or 
what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be running VPN version 4 uh, uh, BGP uh, peers between ISP router 4 and ISP router 1. What this is going to allow us to do, this is going to allow us to filter uh, customer routes based on uh, what's called route targets and uh, and we're going to be using route distinguishers within our uh, virtual routing and forwarding uh, tables to keep um, that traffic unique within the VRF and so we're going to go through all that stuff I know it seems pretty complicated right now but uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started here uh, in some of the configuration on the routers and then we'll go ahead and uh, you know talk it through see if we can get through some more of this theory and uh, see if we can make anything of it so I'm going to go ahead on to the headquarters router first and uh, looks like I already have it turned off here okay so for the headquarters router, what we're going to do is uh, what, you, what I've done already. Um, I've already implemented.